So LCH is very uh, unique in the fact that most of the long-term complications or permanent consequences, we call them a lot uh, in LCH, are actually related to the disease itself. And, and um, actually, when you, when you try to find out more detailed information about this, there actually has been very little research that has been done specifically looking at the, the long-term and, and late complications of um, patients with LCH. And, one of the uh, largest um, studies and one of the only studies was done several years ago through the Histiocyte Society, and, and they asked uh, members to report the types of long-term uh, problems that their patients were experiencing. And so they reported on about 180 patients or so, and, and surprisingly, about 50% of those patients actually were having some kind of, of long-term uh, permanent uh, consequence or late effect from their, uh, from their disease. And one of the, the very common things is uh, diabetes insipidus, and that's actually something that's, that's frequently present at the time um, the patients are actually diagnosed, but um, that impacts the, the patient's ability to uh, handle uh, water, basically. Um, so that's very common and actually is something that can develop as a, as a long-term consequence of the, the disease, even if it's not present at the time of diagnosis. Um, one thing that's been seen is that the, the type and severity of the, the late effects are also related to uh, how the disease presents. So patients who present with um, a single system disease, maybe just a bone lesion, for example, um, are less likely to have any long-term complications compared to patients who present with more of the multi-system type of LCH. And, those are the patients that are, are more likely to actually end up having some long-term um, uh, complications from the disease. Uh, one of the things that we see are a lot of, of orthopedic or bone problems, and that sort of makes sense if you think of a lot of the LCH lesions arise in bones throughout the body, but um, so really wherever the LCH lesions arise, those bones can end up having some, um, some long-term problems. And, for example, patients who have any of the bone lesions that might involve the bones around the eye, uh, those can create some long-term uh, problems related to vision and, and function of the eye. Uh, sometimes these lesions can develop in the, the jaw bones, and, um, and then that can lead to problems from a, a dental and, and orthodontic uh, standpoint on a long-term basis as well. Um, these can develop in the, the spine, uh, so in the, the uh, vertebral bodies of the spine, and, and with that there can be um, long-term problems that can develop from um, just the, the structure and function of the spine, scoliosis, those uh, sorts of things. Um, and then, of course, they can develop in any of the, the bones of, of the uh, arms and legs as well, which, um, depending on where that is and the size and specific location, can cause um, you know, problems with, uh, with uh, specific function of, of a, a limb or a leg. Um, so, you know, we see a lot of um, orthopedic problems then as, as kind of long-term consequences. Um, sometimes it can also involve uh, bones surrounding the ear, which might um, lead to um, hearing complications. And, and uh, so those are kind of the, the common things we can see from a, a bone standpoint. Um, and uh, then there are other organs sometimes that can be involved from the LCH itself as well, especially in, in kids who have the multi-system disease. And so with that, you can see sometimes involvement of the lungs, and um, on a long-term basis, that can lead to some um, problems related to lung function, although typically those are, are not that severe. Um, and the disease can involve the liver, and so occasionally there can be some problems on a, a long-term basis related to um, liver function as well. Um, again, those are, are not as common um, of things that we see and, and really are more related to the, uh, to the kids who have more of the, the multi-system kind of disease. So one of the, you know, one of the more uh, devastating kinds of, of late effects that can develop are some of the, the neurologic and, and uh, neurocognitive problems from, uh, from LCH. And so from, uh, you know, from actual involvement of the, the brain and central nervous system, which we see um, you know, in some patients, that um, frequently can cause um, some problems with um, uh, gait disturbances sometimes, so just problems with uh, balance and, and walking and, and uh, um, uh, problems like that. 
Um, but there are also patients who have more um, problems that can develop related to um, uh, what we call neurocognitive um, function, so sort of how we, how we learn or how we process information. Um, you know, we can see that manifested in, in uh, school problems, learning, uh, learning disabilities, that, uh, that sort of thing. Those are, are not necessarily that um, common, but, uh, but certainly can be, can be present and frequently are seen in patients who have uh, LCH that's involving um, either the, the bones of the skull or um, sometimes with actual involvement of the, of the brain itself. Um, <clears throat> we also um, see those kinds of things more commonly in, in patients who present with the diabetes insipidus um, as a manifestation of uh, LCH as well because that's affecting the pituitary gland which is, is located in the brain. Uh, or, uh, as well. Um, and sometimes there can be uh, visual problems, as I had mentioned earlier, um, which certainly can uh, you know, also sometimes impact um, just the, the neurocognitive function. Um, there have been you know, also kids who have had uh, seizure uh, disorders develop as a result of the LCH. So there's really a, a variety of different things that, uh, that can develop from a, a neurocognitive and learning standpoint related um, to the disease. The other thing that we uh, sometimes see just in general, especially in, in infants who are um, very, very sick with more of the multi-system form of the disease, is uh, that the, the uh, overall consequences of the, the illness can lead to some developmental delays. Sometimes these kids can require uh, frequent and prolonged hospitalizations. And unfortunately, though, when we see that, uh, that type of effect with infants, typically once they've uh, finished their treatment and, and uh, um, are not uh, hospitalized and, and uh, you know, back at home and sort of into just their, their daily routines, we actually can see them uh, gain milestones and regain some of the, the things that they may have, um, uh, have had uh, you know, developmental delays from. So we can see, you know, improvement over time with those. But, um, <clears throat> but you know, as I said, they're, uh, they're really significant um, complications that we can see from a neurologic standpoint, frequently not uh, too common, but, um, but certainly something that has to be watched for very closely in uh, kids after they finish their treatment. Well, fortunately, when we look at late effects uh, specifically related to the, the drugs that are used for treatment of LCH, we actually don't see a whole lot of, of uh, long-term or late effects that, that are directly related to the, the treatments that are used. So that's, uh, but that's good. But there are, there are some things that we see. And the, the treatments typically uh, that we utilize most commonly are uh, vinblastin, um, prednisone, which is a steroid, and uh, six mercaptopurine, which is another uh, form of uh, uh, oral chemotherapy uh, medication. And so the, the vinblastin is one that can affect the, the nerves and the nervous system. And so sometimes what we'll see with that is what we call a, a peripheral neuropathy, and that can present as numbness or tingling, uh, sometimes with uh, foot drop uh, that we'll see that can affect um, gait and walking. Um, sometimes they, patients can have pain uh, related to these uh, neuropathies as well. Uh, fortunately, most of those that develop are actually temporary and will improve over time. Um, and so these are things that very commonly develop um, while the kids are on therapy. Uh, but once they finish therapy and are not receiving vinblastin anymore, we can see these, these types of, of neuropathies actually improve with time. Um, some can be more permanent and long-lasting, but that's, that's really not the, the most common uh, course that we would see. Uh, we do use a lot of uh, steroids in the treatment of LCH, and so prednisone is, is the primary drug for that. And, and prednisone has, uh, you know, unfortunately, a, a lot of, uh, of side effects, and both on a short-term and a long-term basis. And, uh, we, we typically are not giving kids um, long enough courses of steroids that we see a lot in the way of, of very long-term lasting effects from steroids. But some patients who have reactivation of disease or, or severe multisystem disease can end up with very prolonged courses of steroids that, that can lead to some um, more late, uh, late complications. And the kinds of things we watch for from uh, steroids is that they can affect bone health.
And <clears throat> so we can see weakening of the bones, so osteopenia or osteoporosis actually, which is just a, a weakening of the, the strength of the bones. And so that's something that can develop in, uh, in kids who receive uh, steroids on a long-term basis. Another uh, complication is called um, avascular necrosis. And, and again, we don't see that very commonly in kids with LCH, but it is something that is uh, related to a, a steroid side effect. And with that, there's actually um, areas of, of the bone, typically around joints, that, that actually die and can lead to very significant um, pain and um, problems with mobility on a, on a long-term basis. Um, that's something that, again, that is probably a more acute rather than long-term effect of, the, uh, of steroids. Um, steroids can also lead to cataracts uh, if they're given on a long-term basis. Uh, that's a fairly rare complication, but something that, that can develop. And then another thing is that steroids can impact our body's ability to um, utilize insulin or to be able to um, take sugars that we uh, get from our diet and, and actually turn those into um, energy through the, the uh, um, uh, impact of insulin. And so steroids can lead to um, our bodies becoming resistant to insulin and, and in some patients that are on um, higher doses for longer periods of time can actually develop a, a diabetes type um, of uh, problem as well. Those mostly are short-term side effects that, that typically resolve once the, the steroid medication has, uh, has been stopped, fortunately. So we, we typically don't see diabetes developing as a, as a long-term um, complication. Um, in kids, one of the other uh, concerns from a, a steroid long-term effect is, is that it actually has an impact on growth. And so kids who receive higher doses of steroids for um, longer term will actually have um, uh, development or uh, delays in their growth uh, you know, from a height uh, standpoint. And so growth has to be monitored very closely in kids who are on steroids for a uh, longer term basis. And, and fortunately, there are some things that can be done to try to improve um, the growth in kids who have um, you know, developed any uh, problems with their growth from the, the impact of steroids. Um, high blood pressure or hypertension is another complication of steroids. But again, that's more of a short-term complication, and, and the vast majority of, of kids who are treated with steroids don't develop hypertension on a, a long-term basis. Um, the one good thing, I guess, is that most of the, the potential um, late effects that we see from steroids uh, can be uh, monitored for closely, and, and most of them can be treated as well. And, and fortunately, as I've you know, mentioned before, most of them actually resolve uh, once kids are off of the, the steroids. Um, going back to the bone health issue that I mentioned, um, so, you know, certainly treatment with vitamin D and calcium can improve the, the um, um, strength of the bones again. And, and there occasionally are uh, some kids who are, will require a, a, another medication that's designed to really help to um, re-strengthen the bones again. Um, the other drug that I had mentioned that's used very commonly is, is called 6-mercaptopurine. Um, that's been commonly used and is still used commonly in the treatment of LCH. And fortunately, we don't really know um, of any significant long-term side effects from that, uh, from that medication. So that's, that's a good thing. And, and then in the other uh, medications that are used, sometimes more in patients who have had um, reactivation or recurrent LCH that need additional therapy or um, have uh, had more of the uh, systemic form of the disease that uh, has required more intensive therapy, um, drugs such as, as 2CDA and um, cytosine arabinoside or ARIS-C. Um, again, those are um, actually used fairly commonly in LCH, but, um, but we don't really know of any real significant long-term effects related to, uh, to those two chemotherapy medications either, which uh, of course is, is fortunate for the kids who have to, uh, have to receive them. Um, and one of the, the most you know, potentially dangerous uh, late effects from the, the treatment itself is um, that some of the chemotherapy medicines that we use can actually increase a person's risk of developing a cancer. And so there is a, a slightly higher risk of developing a cancer later in life in, in patients who've been treated with chemotherapy um, drugs. 
We do know with LCH, however, that, um, that there are some uh, particular drugs that have been used in the, in the past, such as etoposide, which is not used very commonly anymore, and that, uh, that particular drug is associated with, with developing um, what we call a secondary leukemia. Um, so that has been reported in kids with LCH, but um, as I mentioned, that's not a drug that's really used very commonly anymore in the treatment, so um, is not uh, a big problem moving forward. Um, radiation therapy is a, another treatment that was used more commonly in the past, and, and there can be you know, a significant number of, of long-term complications related to the, the use of radiation therapy in kids. Um, and again, that's not used um, uh, much at all in the treatment of LCH anymore, but, uh, but there are certainly patients um, out there now who are surviving that have had um, radiation, and so there can be uh, late effects from that that have to be uh, monitored from as well. But I think overall, from the, the treatment standpoint, compared to a lot of the other diseases that we use chemotherapy drugs to, uh, to actually treat, the drugs that we utilize in the treatment of, uh, of LCH are ones that, that we don't have big concerns about from a, a long-term uh, follow-up standpoint and, and the, um, you know, leading to um, very significant late effects. So that's, that's fortunate. And I think the one I talked most about was prednisone, and that's probably the one that, um, you know, is, uh, is the most uh, concerning from an LCH treatment standpoint. Well, fortunately, from the treatment itself, there are not really significant concerns from um, you know, uh, learning uh, cognitive or, or development standpoint. Um, so I think it's more uh, in LCH um, related to the disease rather than the treatment. Um, so we do, I, I had talked before, though, about the impact of um, steroids and prednisone. And, and that probably is the, you know, the main um, drug, I guess, from the treatment standpoint that we may um, see more of these uh, potential, uh, particularly developmental um, impact um, related to growth. But, uh, but fortunately, from the treatment standpoint, from uh, a cognitive um, or learning disability uh, standpoint, none of these drugs really contribute um, to the development of that. Um, so that's you know, obviously fortunate. Um, so we don't, we don't see really a lot of, of treatment-related specific late effects that were um, uh, causing very significant impact from uh, you know, any of the, the learning or cognitive standpoint.